The Lord be with you. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you this morning. And on behalf of Session at Hydenwood Presbyterian Church, we welcome you all to worship, whether you're joining us in person or online. We are so glad that you have chosen to spend a portion of your morning with us today. We have a special welcome to extend this morning to our guest preacher. This is Reverend Dr. Shelley Barrett Parsons. Get that all out there. She is currently the executive director of uh, Capital Trees in Richmond, but before that, she was a pastor at River Road and then worked in um, West Virginia. You can read more about her in your bulletin, but we are so glad that she has been able to join us this morning while Andrew is away. So now it's time to sit back, get comfy in your pews, uh, settle your hearts and minds, get rid of all the chaos, breathe out all the distractions in your day as you breathe in God's peace. Won't you please join me in prayer? Here we are, Lord. We come from the busyness of our daily lives, from the hubbub of our work and play, from the hue and cry of the world around us. We come to worship you. In this hour, we long to meet you, to feel your presence surround us, enveloping us, loving us. We long to settle into silence, laying aside our worries and our cares, aware of your presence around us, before us, behind us, within us. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Friends, won't you join me this morning in our call to worship? Power and might and majesty belong to God who created and is creating. Thanks be to God for God's mighty wonders. Like the image of the powerful wind and heavens as a garment, God's majesty is revealed in all creation. We look around at the wonders and marvels at the infinite variety and beauty which God has created. Who are we that God should pay attention to us? We are God's beloved children, the stewards whom God has selected to care for God's world. Amen. Friends, now I ask you to stand in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.
you may be seated. This week, more than ever, we know that it is a broken and fearful world. And this fear and brokenness permeates our being and leads us away from God, each other, and God's good creation. Yet the Spirit blows through, giving us courage to pray without ceasing and to hope for God's redeeming love. In that faith and hope, let us confess together our sins before God and each other. God, daily you provide us all we need and surround us in your love. Yet we rebel against you. We hide your gifts. We accept lies as truth. You sent your Son to teach a deep and abiding love for all creation. Yet we violate the image of God in others. We exploit neighbor and nature. And we threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. And yet you do not forsake us. Your spirit sweeps through our hearts and into the depths of our sin, calling us back to you. Forgive us, Lord. We deserve condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem us and all of creation. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like the father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. God has made us heirs with Christ and delivered us from sin and death. Believe the good news of the gospel. those forgiven in Christ, let us share that same peace with one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're invited to share signs of peace. It's nice to have my friends here. <laughs> She's lovely. 
So today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about what you do when you're scared. So our scripture that the big people will hear today is that God wants us to find peace in him, even when we're scared. So I might need a helper. Do you think I could have a helper? You want to come? Can you help me do so, uh, make signs? Here, um, can I ask you to hold this for a minute? We're going to learn how to say peace in sign language. Can you say it with me? Say it for me. Peace. And then you can say it with me. Your piano and your other one. Say it with me. Peace. Can you do it for me? Maybe when my nervous, this is a test about you, that when I'm really nervous, Good morning. This morning I'm reading from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 32 through 36. And now, my children, listen to me. Happy are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and do not neglect it. Happy is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor, favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. All who hate me love death. This is the word of God.
Our second scripture reading today is found in the New Testament in Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. You can find this in your pew Bible on page 995. Listen now for God's word in the reading of the scripture. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Now that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what I have is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned that the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need, I can do all things through God who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. Here ends the reading of scripture. Thanks be to God. Sorry. But the sermon title actually stands for three things. All, humility, and action. So, aha. All, humility, and action. Which are movements of becoming stewards of God's creation. So we'll begin with all. And the folks in Sunday school already had the chance to see this live and in, in, in action on the screen. But I want to share as we think about the word all an image from a movie. And the movie is that of the sound of music and the opening scenes of the sound of music. If you can remember that scene or imagine it with me, the camera pans out and around the vast stretch of snow-tipped mountains to zoom in on Julie Andrews, arms outstretched singing, the hills are alive with the sound of music. Arms lifted in prayer, all inspired by the vastness of creation, she is lifting a song of praise for creation. Here are some of the words she sings. My heart wants to beat like the wings of the birds that rise from the lakes to the trees. To laugh like a brook as it trips and falls over the stones on its way. To sing through the night like a lark that is learning to pray. I go to my hills, to the hills when my heart is lonely. I know I will hear what I've heard before. My heart will be blessed with the sound of music, and I will sing once more. These lyrics from the opening of the sound of music echo the psalms of praise we know in the Old Testament, praising God's creation and creative work, and remind us that the fundamental response to God's good work and creation is wow for all. Before our passage in Proverbs today, wisdom recounts her own sense of wonder and joy that all at God's creative work. Wisdom recounts, I was there when God established the heavens, when God marked out the horizons of the deep sea, when God thickened the clouds above, secured the foundations of the deep, and set a limit for the sea so that water could not go beyond God's command. When God marked out the foundations of the earth, I was beside God as a master of crafts. I was having fun, smiling before God all the time. 
frolicking in God's inhabited earth and delighting in the human race. The opening scenes of The Sound of Music embodies these words of wisdom, frolicking, delighting, and smiling. In Proverbs, wisdom is all. All embodied, arms wide open, singing praise and knowing one's place in God's vast and good creation. Oh, is that feeling we get in being in the presence of something so vast that it transcends our understanding. A feeling of reverential respect that is mixed with both fear and wonder. Some of our one word expressions of all are wow or sometimes woe. All is that first movement of faith that is grounded in a commitment to be good stewards of God's creation, that call that was laid out for us in Genesis 1. In order to be stewards of God's creation in a way that God intends, we must be awed by it. We must be stopped in our tracks to pay attention. Paul talks about this in his letter to Philippians when he says that we are to focus on what is excellent, admirable, true, holy, just, pure, lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. All focuses us on all that is worthy of praise and the source of what is worthy of praise, which is God. When have you been all inspired? Either stopped dead in your tracks at the magnitude of something, or frozen by the small wonders that pop up among our mundane activities. When is the last time you stopped, took a deep breath, paid attention, and exclaimed, wow, or woe? You can actually cultivate all on a daily basis and choosing to do so for only 5 to 25 seconds, so not very much time, long as it takes to flip and open your screen. Doing that for 5 to 25 seconds can improve, it can decrease, decrease stress, it can improve our well-being, so it decreases stress and anxiety, increases our connections to each other, and increases happiness. Our created selves were wired for all. We reflect God's image when we find that on a daily basis. And you can do it by attending, waiting, and breathing. So you can attend, take just a few seconds to attend to something in your presence. To look at its details, its beauty, its purpose. Waiting until your mind calms. And then exhaling and expanding your breath. You can do this to inspire all on a daily basis, to improve your well-being and connection to others. This all is essential to our faith. Experiencing something so vast that it transcends our understanding evokes fear and wonder. But it also helps us step outside ourselves and connect to other people. It binds us to God, each other, and God's creation. All can also give us a sense of identity and place by helping us appreciate where we are in the moment. And it can also remind us of our smallness and that we're part of a bigger picture. When we see the vastness of God's created world that is beyond our understanding, this all can stimulate curiosity and wonder, and in that curiosity and wonder, make us more creative. In the presence of the vastness of God and creation, all calls forth a more modest self and enables a greater kindness. So that leads to the next thing. All can bring forth humility. When we are struck with wonder or fear, or the realization of our place, 
both the security of that place and the smallness of that place in God's creation, we are rightly humbled at the power of God, at the intricacy of creation, and at the interconnectedness of all living beings. Every day that the sun rises and the sun sets, humility reminds us that we need God to sustain us in creation, to redeem us and forgive us, and to inspire us and to send us. Our all-inspired humility reminds us that we are connected to one another, connected to God, and cared for by God the Creator, who cares for the giant snow-tipped mountains, the tiniest of seeds bringing forth new life in each and every human being. That is humbling. The same humility makes us aware both of the brokenness of the world and our inability to address that brokenness apart from God. Because of that, all inspired humility should draw us into community for encouragement, support, and action. One thing I want to say about humility is it's humility and not humiliation. Paul admonishes us in Philippians, let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. When we are called by God to address the issues of the brokenness of this world, particularly around issues of climate crisis and change, that is awe-inspiring from the fear perspective. And it can bring that awe-inspired response of woe, especially when we see the issues lapping at our back door when it rains. Because of that awe, the awe of woe, It can be easy to feel desperate, anxious, and insistent that we've got to do something now. And that can lead to us going out into the world, pushing people to do something now without humility and without listening. However, we know that the shaming of other people will not lead to action. And I'll share a story about the difference between humility and humiliation by an example from a recent workshop I did that leans on the side, the response was that of humiliation and the question should be, would that evoke change? So I worked with another colleague who used to be in the Department of Forestry to create a workshop about the benefits of planting trees. The person who has experience in forestry talked a good deal, and this was a faith-based workshop, so I talked from a faith perspective. They talked from a perspective of how to plant trees correctly. No mulch volcanoes is a big one. Tree planting, tree planting churches can do. I did some stuff about grants that tree churches can do and ways that you can engage in it. It was an hour-long workshop online, and at the end of the workshop, someone said, well, this is all well and good, but if we don't divest of fossil fuels, none of this matters. That's dismissive. It's shaming and it's humiliation. And it's hard when the climate crisis is so real not to push towards those actions that say what you're doing is wrong and this is useless, but that's not leading with the humility that all inspires in us. It doesn't inspire action, and the first step in bringing others along in the call to stewards God creation in more careful ways is by inspiring all in that creation and approaching others with humility and not shaming them because they fail to live up to the urgent standards needed. So all, and then humility, and then action. It is all in wonder described, it's that all in wonder described earlier, where wisdom frolics and plays in the garden that leads to the words that we hear in scripture today. Happy are those who keep my ways. Wisdom's ways are to delight, frolic, smile, and seek inspiration from God's creative work. It is that awe-inspiring and humbling work that God calls us to do in action. So what are things we can do? First, we can inspire all. We can help others become more mindful of God's good creation, by taking walks, 
by practicing things like breath prayer that center us on God's creation, by learning the stories of God's work and love of creation in the scriptures, we can inspire others in the awe of God's creation. The other thing we can do, inspired by humility, is to connect and to listen. We are called to be folks who listen to the voices of people long silenced, people most urgently concerned about the crisis and most urgently impacted by the crisis. To be stewards of God's creation is to listen to others about their concerns and their hopes for resilience. It's also to learn the science and know that as part of our language and action. And then we can work to heal and advocate. There is a time and place and humility to unmask the idolatries of our independence that lead to dependence on climate-destroying habits. There's a time for that. There's a time to advocate. And there's a time to build for, build and work for resilient communities where all living beings, especially God's children, their well-being is considered and they are able to thrive and find a home. And when we do that, we can hope that all people can delight, frolic, and smile at the beauty of God's creation. May it be so. Amen. Please join in singing with me and stand as you are able. Hymn number 177, I will come to you, you are mine.
friends, won't you join me as we stand together and firm that which we believe. Our affirmation of faith this morning is from a brief statement of faith. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyfully lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Won't you join me in prayer? Gracious God, the heavens declare your glory and the firmament show for the work of your hands. One day tells its tale to another and each night imparts knowledge to the next. The sun, the moon, the seas, the dry lands, the plants that enrich the earth, the creatures that swim and fly and run, all these gifts of your creation. Although they have no words or language, their sound goes out to all the lands and their message to the ends of the earth. So we offer our prayers for the earth and recommit ourselves to honor and protect it, to learn to be good stewards. May we hear the cries of creation and see in its power and beauty your own image and your deep love for that which you have made. May we love all of your creation, every grain of sand, every leaf, every ray of light, ancient tree, bees, animals. May we not trouble the earth's life or waste its resources or abuse its beauty. May we look on the natural world with reverence and acknowledge that we are small in the vastness of this universe. We know that for you, O oh God, all life is like an ocean. All is flowing and blending and that when we withhold any measure of love from anything in your universe, we withhold that same measure of love from you. But this morning, God, we also pray with broken hearts as we pray for our brothers and sisters, for strangers and neighbors that are living in the lives of violence, those who are sick in their bodies, their minds, their spirits, who have lost beloved sons and daughters, students and teachers to gun violence. The continued choice of violence to solve problems fills us with shock and confusion with grief and despair, leaving us often feeling helpless. So we come to you. We lean into your love in the midst of our anger, grief, and fear. Help us find the actions that are needed to pray never again as we learn to work together, lean on each other towards a solution that brings peace out of violence, a solution that models your love for all your creation. In particular, this morning, God, we ask you to pray and be a presence to the families and communities everywhere affected by violence. Alveda, Texas, and Ukraine being just two examples, we ask that you bring them some measure of peace today. Yet even in the midst of our suffering, we offer the gratitude that is in our hearts, gratitudes for our lives, for our church community, for the freedom to worship, for the food and shelter and friendships that sustain each of us every day. We rejoice with the joys that we have and for those who have found love, those who have been healed, those who look forward to the future, who have meaningful work, happy families, safe and happy homes. 
We lift up those who worship you in freedom and beauty. Through all of this, Lord, be with your church. Help us to be faithful to your word, reflecting you in our words and actions today and always. And we pray these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, if we look into the Bible, we can see that Jesus sort of had four types of invitations for his followers. And I think we'd like to offer them to you Come and see, he's offered. As you join us for worship, study, fellowship, see how Christ is working and with and through this congregation, we hope that you find something uh, that we offer that helps you come and see. Come and be. Come and be willing to be transformed by the words spoken, by faith shared within this congregation as we learn together what it means to be fishers of men. Come and do. So we ask that you take this opportunity to, put, to see how you can put your faith in, into action, your prayers into action. What do we offer here that you might find of interest? And come and go as we take this invitation with you this morning and go out and let others see uh, you as a disciple following the one who models everything for us. So we always have many things for you to look, at, look forward to. Uh, Hindwood Explorers is going to go out for fellowship and to learn to be together as a congregation to the um, art walk at Hilton and lunch at the um, Greek Festival. If that interests you, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, you can contact me for more information. Certainly you can make the choice to give of your time and talents to the many ways that we volunteer here at the church and your financial uh, support of the church's work is also lovely.
Please join me in prayer. Gracious and holy God, accept what we offer today, our resources, our faltering steps, our brokenness, our leftovers, our hope, our risking, our lives. Bless and transform all that we offer and all that we hold back that new life may be ours to celebrate and share in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing if you are able to sing our uh, final hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. We saw two ways to pray today. The first is that of awe and reverence for God. And I was struck by what Carrie showed us about the sign for peace, which is almost like wringing our hands with that anxious concern, but then clearing the space and humility to let God act and God work and call us to action. And in that action, we know that what does the Lord require of us but to do justice love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>